Hi there everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Nimbus here, another episode of Magic Jewels Origins. So for Friday Night Magic this week, I am going to be playing with a uh, Selesnia Renown deck. So basically making use of things like Rock Smallers, which have the Renown mechanic. But when they deal combat damage to a player, they get extra counters on them and sometimes special abilities. So we're going to start with the Forest and the Sunblade Elf. While this isn't a renowned creature, it does get a nice boost from uh, controlling a planes, and then it also gives a nice pump up with its special ability once you get up to five mana as well. So we've got a couple of options. We do have the Grasp of the Hyromancer and the Nimbus Wings that we could potentially throw on the Sunblade Elf, but I like to keep them more for my renowned creatures more than anything else, although at the moment we're not really finding too much. So I'm probably just gonna, oh, that was completely the wrong card. I should have played the planes there because I'm a big old dummy. Basically, if I played the planes there, this would have gone up to a two mana, two attack creature, and I would have been able to deal two damage there, but I completely wasn't thinking, so never mind. So we won't be playing anything this turn, uh, as we obviously drew a mana and nothing that I could play on turn two. At the moment, we're not really playing anything till turn five for the Rock Smallers, so we've got a Yeever's Force Mage here, two two creature. So we're looking at red green at the moment. Interesting. Maybe some kind of uh, red-green mid-range, something like that. I don't know. Got another Sunblade off though, so that's pretty cool. Now, do I put a Nimbus Wings on that one, or do I put Grasp of the Hyromancer? I'm thinking Grasp of the Hyromancer might be slightly better. So we can swing, tap, and then play the Sunblade Elf at the end. I'd rather give the Evasion to like the Rock Smallers on turn six kind of thing. So this is going to deal 3 damage into my opponent's face, taking down to 16. Yeah, I'd rather give the evasion to the Rock Smallers, um, just in case he has like more than one ground creature. And I want to give put that in the air and just keep swinging at his face that way. Whereas the Grasp of the Hyromancer kind of works now. He's only got one creature down which I can tap and then swing without being blocked, which is quite nice. So this is more for later on, when I want to swing in the air, give one of my big creatures a bit of evasion. So what are we waiting for? Waiting for my opponent to actually do something. He obviously can't make up his mind, so... Am I expecting an attack? I mean, he may as well. I'm not going to block, so... Because I'm not going to block with a 2-2. Go wait to see what he plays. So he's playing Call of the Full Moon. Okay, interesting. So if I play two spells, that drops off, I believe. Okay, so let's play the forest and then I've got the choice to play say for example I could play Nimbus Wings and Titanic Growth this turn and that would then force that Call of the Full Moon to actually drop off which would be quite interesting plus I'd then give my 2-2 evasion so I'm probably going to do that. Should we should we do that? So that's one spell this turn. So we're swinging with both of these. They're both going to do three damage so and then what we're going to do is then Titanic Growth you as well. So that should tap, which it does. We swing in for 10. Takes him down to 6. See, this is why I always say you should not put auras on and he's been replaced by the AI because he knows that, that Call of the Full Moon is about to disappear. So yeah, this is why I always say don't put uh, offensive auras on post-combat because there's no point because I'll, I'll just do things like that. Especially something that's so fragile as Call of the Full Moon, which is going to drop off the moment I play two spells. I mean, look, he's pretty much dead now. Unless he can play like two blockers. No, just an Outland Colossus. So I tap, I deal three damage. Perfect. So that's pretty much the perfect start to this game. So you may as well just swing, tap, deal the six damage. There we go. So that is game over. Good start, good start. Right, I'll see you in a sec for game number two, guys. Okay guys, here we are for game number two. We're playing a rank 15, was that, did I see? Um, I'm thinking of keeping this hand, mostly because I've got the Citadel Castellan and the Nimbus Wing, so see if we can get away with this. Start with the Selesnia Guild date. Yeah, level 15, Homeless Jade. We're playing na na Natif Natifof... I don't know how to sell that. Uh, Natifof Toffee. Nafi Toffee? Something like that, whatever. Nafif Toffee, something like that. Very random. We're gonna get a nope, we're not gonna get a turn two drop, of course we're not. So I'm gonna play a second Celestia Guildgate and leave it there. 
So next turn we'll be dro dropping the Citadel Castellan, a renowned two creature, so it goes up to a 4-5 with Vigilance, which is quite nice. We also have the Evasion for it and the Wild Size to pump it up as well, which is always pretty good. Okay, so he's played a Perilous Mirror, so we're obviously looking at a uh, blue-red blue, blue -red Thopter deck, I'd assume. Blue-red blue Thopter slash Artifact deck, so let's play the Citadel Castellan. Won't be blocking the 1-1 this turn for obvious reasons, because it would just kill it. With its kind of two little damage that it does. I often think of the uh, Perilous Mirror as a kind of a souped up Goblin Arsonist, so it's very similar. One extra mana for one extra damage, basically, when it dies. A colourless souped up Arsonist, yeah. Yeah, this is definitely Thopters. We've got the Thopter Engineer now. So I think Nimbus Wings going on the Citadel Castellan this turn is pretty much perfect. As it is a Vigilance creature, so I can continually block the Thopter in the air. So I'm going to skip blocking there because obviously I don't want to destroy my Citadel Cast Castellan right now. Okay, so let's just drop a forest. So we'll be able to play Rock Smallers next turn, which is pretty good. First of all, what we really want to do is play the Citadel, put the Nimbus Wings on the Citadel Castellan. Get this Renowned. Like I said, it's got Vigilance as well, so we can use it to block the Thopter next turn, or potentially even the Perilous Mirror, as we won't die to it now that we've got it pumped up with both the Nimbus Wings and the Renown. Although this, uh, I was about to say this is open for reprisal without thinking that, you know, that's not a white deck. What am I on about? So he's played the Chief of the Foundry. Okay, that's fair enough. So I'm still not that scared by any of these, so I could block potentially Perilous Mirror, Thopter, uh, in, in the air. Citadel Castellan doesn't give a crap. So I'm assuming he's probably not going to swing there. So I can swing every turn with this and not have to worry because it's got the Vigilance, which is quite nice. Okay, let's swing with my 5-7 in the air, like I said. May as well. We've got no qualms. It stays open as a blocker as well, which is pretty sweet. There we go. So let's get let the 5 damage go through. And we may as well play the Rock Smallers as well. Get that on the battlefield so we can potentially push through wild size damage next turn. To get it renowned as well. Plus we do get the card draw from the wild size, which is a nice bonus for that one. Gives it trample, so whereas it doesn't really matter too much as if the rock smallers already has trample, but So I feel like we're in a fairly good position here. He does get to draw two cards now, so it goes back up to five. So we could really do with a third creature fairly soon. But we're looking pretty comfortable with the renowned uh, flying Citadel Castellan. So like I said, we just keep swinging every turn, even if he blocks. I don't care. Very nice. We've got the top and free blade, which is exactly what I was looking for. So let's swing in with the Castel Castellan. Won't bother with the Rock Smallers. Don't need to quite yet. Let's just keep him as a ground defense against the uh, Thopter Engineer and the uh, Chief of the Foundry. So this is where he's, this guy's got to decide whether or not. Do I play Wild Size? No, I won't play Wild Size right now. I'll play it next turn, as that'll give me lethal, but. Uh, no point playing it just yet. So yeah, we do have lethal on the board, technically. Depends if he blocks, of course. So he's twin bolting my top and free blade. Okay, you do that. Why would you be twin bolting that now? So I'm glad this... So he's got a second twin bolt. So we're going to... So has he realised that I've got some kind of uh, pump up for this? I'm going to see if he does it again. So we now pause, we wild size you, we bring you out of fiery impulse range. But I now can't block the 2-2, but that's fine by me. We still have the lethal with the titanic growth and he's wasted pretty much... Unless he's got another fiery impulse, I think he... Yeah, and there we go. So he knows that uh, it's all over for him. Haha, <laughs> excellent. We've actually got the two Titanic Growths. So we... Uh, no, we can't quite push through Lethal this turn, but we will be able to soon. So he, his whole strategy was relying upon taking out that Citadel Castellan. So we are going to destroy that Thop to this turn. It's fine. So let's just play the Forest. And we have Lethal next turn. So I knew that we'd have to take out that Thop to... Because unfortunately we don't have the Trample. If we'd been able to keep the Wild Size, it would have been fine. But... Uh, so I'll block you. Don't care about the 2-2. Two, two. I'll kill the one that I know that won't get me killed, basically. So he's going to get two Thopters down. 
This is going to get frustrating. I may as well swing at everything here, I suppose. Can he really kill all of this? So if he doesn't block one, or do I just swing in the air? Now nah, we'll just keep swinging in the air. We'll, we'll play it safe. I don't want to like go crazy here and lose everything and look like an idiot in front of all you guys. I'll play it safe. So we kill another Thopter. So one Thopter to go, and then we've got lethal. Unless we pull some some trample damage from somewhere. So again, I'll just skip blocking, let the two damage go through. I'm in no great hurry. So he's playing another Chief of the Foundry, fair enough. Uh, you know what, I'm actually going to swing with everything, because even if he blocks that, I may try and push through all the damage with the t with the Titanic Growth. So I want to see what he blocks first. So he's playing Chief for the Foundry, so we're going to pause there. So he's double blocked that, so at the moment he's dealing 5 damage through to me there. So a Titanic Growth you once. Pause that again. So at the moment he's doing 5 damage and that saves that one. But also Titanic Growth you as well. May as well just save everything here. Leave him with nothing basically. So we'll push through some damage here I think. So he's sacrificed Peer and Keel in the Lar to do 2 damage to me. So does that mean I push, push through more damage through Trample? No not quite but that does get Renown. So we've got a pretty good board here. Fiery Impulse, okay, so goodbye top and free blade. Never mind. Don't really care too much. Unless you can play a, an aerial blocker, you're dead. Okay, there we go. So we're, we're good. We finally made it. So I pushed through the last little bit of damage. I was swing with both as I'm just feeling kind of greedy here. There we go. So he's blocked with the uh, Perilous Mirror. Okay, so I'll see you in a sec for game number three. Okay guys, here for game number three. So we are playing another homeless Jace because, you know, people can't be asked to uh, change default settings. I'm going to draw a new hand there. Can't get away with that minimum amount of mana, but I can get away with this. Mostly because I've got the top and free blade. So it's a nice 2-2 two -two, uh, Vigilance uh, Renown 1 creature. So we're playing a rank 15, 385, Nice string of numbers there. Oops, a daisy. Accidentally zooming on my top and free blade, so he's taking a while to decide if he wants to mulligan. Very weird. Play the uh, play the planes, forest. So I may as well keep the Selesnya Guildgate till last, because there's no need for me to play it right now. There's only the one white mana for either of these. And I do want to get the top and... I actually said that. I should have played the Selesnya Guildgate first. What am I doing? Ugh. Let's play the forest, and then the top and free blade. So he just apparently took forever to decide if he wanted to mulligan or not, and then didn't mulligan? I don't know. Hope, it, hope he's got a garbage hand, basically. Would be nice. Or a hand that he's not really sure on would also be pretty cool. Let's boog along to the, uh, to the music. I do kind of like the music. It's kind of nice. Okay, nothing there. Oh, and he's been replaced by the AI. Fantastic. Uh, we'll try and see this out. Let's play the Sun Petal Grove. We'll try and win here against the AI. If it's a fairly easy one, then I will most likely play a fourth game. We'll see how it goes. I want to kind of uh, win against the, the AI now, though. Now we're playing it. No point skipping over it. So, obviously, we want to play the Stalwart Avon. We want to make that renowned ASAP. Okay, is he playing Elves? Interesting. I wonder why he decided to quit. Very bizarre. And uh, Elvish Visionary. Okay. I wonder why that guy left. Unless... I, I, I'm never sure if, basically, when you quit, the, uh, the AI gets a different hand or not. I, I, I always remember hearing somewhere that, basically, if you left the game then the AI would get a brand new hand. That, um, but I'm not sure if that's ever carried over from older versions of the game or not. So he's not blocking there. Okay, interesting. So we'll play another Star Wars Avon. I've just realised we've drawn into nothing except... Oh, nothing but land apart from this one Star Wars Avon. It's rather frustrating. Eh, this should be able to help us finish it off though. Yeah, I'm never sure if that's just a, uh, whether that's just been a rumour. Whether or not that the AI gets a new brand new hand or whether or not... Um, that was always just something that people suspected. I wonder why that guy decided to quit. 
or whether they're not ready to get disconnected or something. Ooh, very nice. A Farrakas, it's a disciple. A nice renowned one death touch creature. So we're swinging with the two flyers as this could potentially be killed off by all three of these now while leaving the one two behind. Only if I chose the one two to be last, of course, I'd probably kill off the one two first and leave one of the one ones behind, but uh, eh, we'll just keep playing mana. Hopefully we'll draw into one of our big guns, either the, uh, Out is it Outland Colossus or uh, Rocks Warm... Warm the, one of the, the, basically the Rhinos. Okay, so this is not cool. He's just suddenly played a 4-4 Jagged Scar Archer. So now my Flyers are in a bit of trouble. We do have another Stall Haven though, so... Let's try, try and do as much damage as possible before... Uh, we'll play the Far We'll swing with the Farrakas Disciple. If he blocks, then it just weakens his Jagged Scar Archers anyway, so... So we'll go for Thornbow, Elvish Visionary, Elvish Visionary. So we kill off most of them. So it, this now actually leaves my... Um, the reason I did that is because it actually leaves my Stalwart Avens relatively safe now because he now can't just immediately destroy one with Jagascar Archers. Unless he can somehow play two Elves this turn, these are safe. Which is why I did that. I didn't mind sacrificing that to keep my Flyers safe. My reasoning behind that. Because reasons... Okay, so he's played a Shaman of the Pack, so I lose two health. Fair enough. Don't really care too much. So we could have always tapped that there and destroyed the 1 3, but what the hell do I know? This is the AI we're talking about, of course, guys. So we do five damage here. Okay, now he's tapping it. I see. So I lose, I lose one of them there. So we do four damage instead. So we'll play that one. Uh, we'll, we'll, leave, we'll leave the mana open to psych out the AI, which wouldn't really ever work. I'm fairly sure the AI can't be psyched out and would probably know what I had in my hand anyway. I have no idea how that would work. It's like, you've got to program the AI, but not to know what I've got in my hand. Yeah, I'm trying to like put my finger on like what kind of music this is. I suppose it almost seems like quite um, Middle Eastern, I suppose. I let the three damage go through as we've pretty much won anyway, unless he can play one more elf here. Which he can, so I potentially just want to swing with everything here and hope that he blocks with one or two things. We do have a Citadel Castellan, which is quite nice, so I want to swing with everything here, because basically he can kill off one of my flies anyway. So if he taps it, he's then open for one of my other ground creatures to go through. So yeah, he's dead. Okay, so can he do both? I did not know that. Interesting. Um, I did not know that he could tap and block at the same time. That's fairly cool. That's something for me to keep in mind in the future, but we've basically won because he had to use the Jagged Scar Archers to block my top and free blade anyway. So we've now got the two damage in the air, which can't be blocked. Even if you were to play a Jagged Scar Archer... Um, skip blocking. Uh, yeah, even if you were to play a Jagged Scar Archer now, he wouldn't be able to take it out um, on, his, on my next turn. So he's playing a... Ah, oh, no, Guilt Leaf Winnower. I'd forgotten about you. You... Oh, no, 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 no. Damn it. That was... I was going to win there. I'm one, one health away. Um, we do, however, have Grasp of the Hieromancer. So what can I block here? What can I, like, tap, I suppose? What do we want to pump up first? So I'm thinking my 2-3. So swing with both of these... Tap the 4-3. So even if he blocks with both of them, yeah, so he'd have to block both of these. Maybe if the double, yeah, so that dies, that dies. We've got a 3-4 which goes up. No, it doesn't quite go up yet. I'm going to spot a bother here though. I need like a flyer or something maybe. So he can block the 3 Ah, oh, Reef Soul. That's... <sighs> well, that's frustrating. I thought I'd won this, and then he obviously goes and top decks the Guiltleaf Winnower. So unless I get something awesome, like, I don't know, an Outland Colossus or something, I think I'm pretty much dead. And he's got a Lissalana Hunt Master, so I think this might be a loss here. Against the AI, of course, which is kind of annoying. And they're com- Gee, you're joking. The Nimbus Wings comes down now. Ugh, Reef Soul, how dare you? Right, I'm going to have to concede here, and I'll see you in a sec for a fourth game. 
Okay guys, so for our fourth and final game, we're playing a rank, what was it? Uh, that's not a bad opening hand, I'll keep that. Uh, rank 7, Raki124. So I think we'll start with the Selesnia Guild Gate, as Sun Petal Grove will come in untapped, providing we've got a plains or a forest. So as we're, as we're starting off with um, two mana creatures, we don't mind dropping the Selesnia Guild Gate on turn number one this time. Remember to do that, of course. Ah, very nice. We've even got ourselves, found ourselves a store Avon as well. So we've got a pretty good opening hand here. Even got a grasp of the Hyromancer. Uh, I would like to have more of these in the deck, but I've only got two unlocked at the moment. So it's one of those cards where once I've got like the other two unlocked, they will be going in. Ah, there we go. We've actually got a second uh, grasp of the Hyromancer. So let's play the planes now. I want... Uh, the console's lieutenant to go down. Reason being, if I can get this renowned, whenever it attacks in, and it's also got first strike, which is pretty good. So whenever it gets, whenever it's, when it's renowned, so it becomes a three-two. Got first strike, and then when you attack, when it attacks, other creatures get plus one plus one, which is pretty crazy. So it's a pretty good card. So Deathbird Shaman, I'm not too worried about. So it looks like we're playing another elf deck, which is fair enough. So let's drop the Sun Petal Grove. Uh, I mean, actually, I'm going to play the Grasp of the Hyromancer on this. Reason being is I can actually a a tap it and then get it uh, renowned this turn. So let's do that. There we go. So we've got the second Grasp of the Hyromancer as well. So we can potentially be tapping two creatures every turn, which is quite nice. So that goes up to a 4-2. 4-3, sorry. With first strike and renown, which is uh, pretty sweet. And it's like little extra ability to pump up all my other creatures by plus one, plus one when it swings in as well. So this is definitely looking like another elf deck. Obviously, elves, elves are very popular. Those are very, uh, very... Ooh, Fleshback Marauder. I was not expecting that. So that's kind of scupping my plans. That's rather frustrating. And I have to discard a card. So I'm thinking probably just one of my lands as I don't necessarily need it right now. That's rather annoying that I had to get rid of the uh, console's lieutenant, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, we will be playing the Stalwart Avon, though, I think, would be the best play here. As we can get it swinging in the air. As it's got its evasion with the flying. And um, we've got Liliana. Okay, fair enough. I almost thought you would have saved that until after... Uh, the Flesh Bag Marauder was ready, because then that way would have been, essentially... The great thing you want to do is get Liliana down, then Flesh Bag Marauder something, because you essentially just activate it straight away. I'm going to skip blocking there, let that three damage go through. And we've got the Perilous Mirror as well. Okay, fair enough. Interesting deck. So, what I originally thought was an Elf deck, so a Golgari Elf deck, it looks like we're actually playing, like, a Sacrifice deck. Or just kind of like a kind of controlish type deck, I suppose. So let's swing in the air with the 1 3. So is Liliana's flips whenever um, a non token creature control dies? Okay, that's fair enough. So Farrakh, I'm going to play Farrakh's Disciple, I think, to stop the Liliana swinging in with the lifelink because I can just kill her off straight away that way. Do have the grasp of the Hyrobats to come down on something at some point. Potentially the uh, evasion creature. Okay, Guilt Leaf Winnower. That's not cool. So I'm guessing that's going to be my... Oh, okay, my Farrakhan's Disciple's going. Interesting. I suppose you can now swing with everything here and he, I can't do anything about it. So I lose six life here. Ouch, that's quite painful. Nice, we've got the Nimbus Wings as well, which is good. So we'll be playing Top and Free Blade at the end of my turn. So we do two damage. We play Top and Free Blade. I, I don't want to go up against my best advice. I, I, I'm almost tempted to put an aura on that, but... I think I'm dead here. Let me have a quick look. So, six, seven, no, uh, six, five, six, ten, plus the elemental bond, which is whenever a creature with power three or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Okay, so I'm not quite dead yet. 
So I take a lot of damage here, though. Um, I either kill off the 3 1, which I'm very loath to do, or do I just take. Was it the 8 damage? I can't really risk that, so do I? Uh, no, I'm going to skip blocking. I'm going to have to wait until next turn and try and. I, I, I don't want to do this, but. What have we got here then? Gather the pack. Okay, so I think this might be a loss just because. Oh, wow. So he's finally found a land, which is the Evolving Wilds. Yeah, I think this is a loss just because uh, the fact that my Constance of the got taken out that early. Oh, Outland Colossus. Very nice. But I think it's almost a case of too little, too late. So we may as well play it. I don't think I can block all of this. I don't know. I can block most of the damage coming my way. Um, I may as well... No, I don't really want to swing with this. As much as I'd like to. Uh, it's got... What's the word I'm looking for? It's got Vigilance, but basically he can just kill it off with the Liliana, so... I bide my time here. I Can I prevent enough damage here? Or does he just win? So Gravedigger's going to pull something back. I might just be able to survive here. I might be pushing it closely. Oh no, Fleshbag Marauder. That's the last thing I wanted to see. I think that's me dead now because now I can't um, evade enough of the damage. The Liliana flips. That's one less uh, creature coming my way. So I think I'm still alright at the moment. But yeah, I need that top and free blade really. Yeah, I'd love to be able to give my Outland Colossus flying, and then... So I'm going to have to discard a card. No, I'm not. So he's returned... Target non-legendary from the graveyard. Okay. So swinging in with the 4-3 and the 1-1. One, one. Interesting. Okay, so he's going to try and push for victory here. I block the 6-6 six, six and the 3-1. Why can I not declare that set of blockers? What am I doing? Oh, no. I forgot this is Menace, isn't it? Well, that's a big old bag of sadness, isn't it? So I think that's a concede. Never mind. Okay, guys. So let's take a quick look at the deck. So, uh, like I said, starting off with the Sunblade Elf. It's a nice one drop, which usually becomes a 2-2 two -two in this deck, as we are playing green-white. Might the Masses. I've only got one of these in the deck, so it doesn't really show up that much. But you basically get plus one, plus one until end of turn for each creature you control. So it's just a pump card for pushing through damage early on and late on, and for ensuring that cards uh, get their renown. Uh, Consoles do Tenant. As you saw, that would be a great card if it stayed on the battlefield, but unfortunately got uh, Fleshbag Marauders, which was quite frustrating, which wasn't what I was expecting, so uh, very annoying. Top and Free Blade, it's a nice uh, nice card. I've only got two of them unlocked right now, which is why there's only two of them in the deck, but it's a nice two drop with, uh, with Vigilance and Renown 1, so usually makes it to a 3-3 if you can get down fairly early. Undercity Troll, didn't see this one show up today. It's a renowned one creature with regenerate, so you can uh, basically keep it alive when it should be sent to the graveyard, which is quite nice. Grasp of the Hyromancer would like the other two of these in the deck once I've got them unlocked, but it's just great. Pumps up your creature, plus one, plus one, so it can kill off smaller, help kill off smaller creatures and taps them. Uh, taps during combat to ensure that renown goes through. Nimbus Wings to give all my non flyers evasion, uh, so again, you're pushing through that renown damage. Uh, Titanic Growth to push through massive damage on renowned creatures later on, especially those with Trample. Stalwart Aven, a uh, nice flyer with a renowned one, so just a nice uh, just a nice all-round card. Knight of the Pilgrim's Road, a renowned one creature with a, it becomes a 4-3, so pushing through a fair amount of damage. This is a great card, didn't see it come up today unfortunately. It's a renowned 2 uh, uh, three mana creature and then also it's got a nice card draw mechanic, so whenever another creature becomes renowned, I get to draw a card. Citadel Castan, great card, with Vigilance and Renown too, so comes a 4-5, which is pretty good. You know, nice attacking and defensive uh, abilities and Vigilance as well, makes it pretty awesome. Wild Size, didn't really see this one come up today, but this is great for pushing through huge damage. Um, and also you get to draw a card, it gives you creature trample is the main thing, so great for getting that Renown activated. Farrakhan's Disciple, uh, Death Touch Renown creature, so uh, pretty good for dealing with uh, huge creatures potentially. 
and it just is a nice overall kind of power but mostly for the death touch so the two big hitters of the deck is the Out outland colossus I only really saw that come down right at the very end but if you can get this down and make it stick it's got renown six so it can potentially become a 12 12 and can only be blocked by um one creature at a time so it's pretty crazy so once you've got it down um it's going to be like killing creatures left right and center and pushing through huge damage finally we've got the rock smallers so a trample 4-4 with renown 2 so it becomes a 6-6 with trample it's pretty crazy pretty good uh, in terms of the uh, mana we've got the plains the forest the sun petal groves and the Slesnia guild gates and i've realized afterwards that what i really should include in this deck would probably be the rogues passages so what i'd probably do is remove one of each of these put through the road put in the rogues passages in future which basically makes something like say for example the outland colossus unblockable for a turn but i completely forgotten about these so uh that is my mistake probably something that we'd like to revisit when i come back and kind of uh fine-tune this deck in a few weeks time once i've got all the cards unlocked so that is the deck that is some games uh, what i'm going to do to finish off is unlock some packs so did some calculations over the weekend oh no not the weekend the other day and basically i'm about 29 packs away from opening up the full set so hopefully over the next few weeks i can get the rest of these unlocked but for the time being let's unlock three right now I haven't got quite enough for six so let's open some boosters so this will take us down to 26 packs we needed to open hey my first languish very nice been looking for you got a consecrated by blood so a black enchantment uh bound in crassus uh, guardian of melitus not entirely sure what use this has but it's a zero six defender wild instinct so it's a green fight card and a ring warden owl let's see what we get in booster number two Ooh, my final dragon fodder. Very nice. Yay, Chandra. Woo. One planeswalker to go. All I'm missing now is Gideon, I think. So that's uh, the fourth out of fifth planeswalkers. There we go. Another top and free blade. Excellent. Another rogue's passage as well. Pretty cool. Uh, Blightcaster. So whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you may have target creature get minus two, minus two until end of turn. So it could be quite interesting for a black white um, enchantment deck, maybe. Another artifice's epiphany. And like I said, my final dragon fodder. So nice for my rush decks. So let's grab our final pack of the video. There we go. Let's see what we get. Ooh, another Elvis Visionary. Very nice. Going in my uh, elf, elf deck. Ah, oh, finally, my first Dwine's Elite. Been looking for you. I want these. Uh, so that's going to go in my Elf deck. Very nice. Unholy Hunger. Nice control, black control card. Hicks's Prison Warden. So uh, basically a flash card which you can use to uh, exile creatures. Scrapskin Drake for my flyer deck, so not a bad set of packs actually, I quite like that. So let me just adjust my number down to 26, which is pretty cool, just so I know how many I've got left to unlock. So uh, ah, that is the end of the episode for now. As always guys, don't forget to comment and like if you enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>